But I'm Julia Hartley Brewer, and you're with Talk TV. Joining me right now to run through all the top stories is Conservative commentator Benedict Spence. Good morning to Good you. Good morning. Um, let's talk population figures. Um, Wow, that's all I can say. I mean, we've been talking about population. It's something I actually have covered on the show a number of times in terms of uh, our population going up. We talk, obviously, about net migration, that 745,000 figure, uh, mm. absolutely shocking figure uh, in, in the last year. Um, <laughs> more people coming to live in this country than leaving. And you laugh at the fact, you know what, 200,000 homes are built a year. Most of those, by the way, are unaffordable. Mm -hmm. They're they're, they're expensive sort of penthouse flats that are being built in places like Knightsbridge, which most of us could never dream of affording, being bought by foreign millionaires as as investments. Um, We haven't got the homes for these people. We haven't got the uh, the schools for their children. We haven't got the uh, GP appointments, the uh, NHS doctors. Um, We we haven't got the jobs for these people because, oh, oh no, we do have the jobs for these people. Oh, yeah. And that's why they're pushing down wages Mm. uh, for uh, people who are born and bred in this country. Um, the figures, though, are absolutely stunning. The ones we got from the Office for National Statistics. These are estimated, you know, predictions, projections of what is going to happen in the next few years. And the population currently around the 67 million mark, believed to be going up to 70 million by 2026. Now, mm. they thought it was 2036 at the earliest that it was going to reach that number. But given the scale of immigration, that's what they now reckon. And it will be 73.7 million by 2036. And 92% of that will be due to net uh, immigration. It's the equivalent of 6.6 million more people in this country in 12 years' time, and that's the equivalent of five cities the size of Birmingham. Mm. <clears throat> what I'm asking this morning is people's reaction to that. I want to leave it very wide, very open. Mm. What's your reaction when you hear those, those figures? I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the attitude of the British government for the last 20 years. I was yep. like, eh, it'll work itself out. You know, people yeah. can do it. It's a disgrace. Nobody has voted for this. Nobody was consulted on this. And as no, you just not nobody out, voted for this. We specifically were asked. Asked not. And, and we asked no. not to have this. Yeah. Um, and, and as you've just said, you've gone through the sort of the myriad issues that we have in this country that are affecting people and have been affecting and would be affecting us even if we had no migration. We're not building our houses. We're not investing in infrastructure. Uh, there isn't actually the capacity. And it's not one of those, you know, oh, we're full kind of thing, you know, where people then go, oh, well, actually, only whatever percentage of the British mainland is built on. There simply isn't the res- aren't the resources and in terms no of state plans. Capacity. And there are no plans exactly. for it. That's this is the thing. Tony Blair said, I don't know, it was mm. going to be absolutely fine. Open the doors to Eastern Europe. Very different from what say, Germany and other countries did uh, under EU expansion. Um, they, you know, they, they predicted far fewer people. All of the people who were accused of being racist, the Nigel Farages, mm. um, uh, you know, a Migration Watch UK and others, mm. all accused of being racist for saying, no, it's going to be far higher. Even their estimates were well, well below what it actually was. And the reason why the Office for National Statistics has had to revise these figures is because all of their predictions have been off. So there's no reason to think, and even, by the way, their predictions for what's going to happen in the next 10 or 12 mm. years, even those are based on a level of immigration, net immigration, which is well below where we are today. Yeah. With the expectation, <clears throat> according to the polls, that we're going to have a Labour government that apparently thinks we should have pretty much an open-door policy. So I don't know where we go with this. Now, there is the economic issue. Yeah. There's no doubt at all. This is a huge economic issue because we're told constantly that immigration is cre- crucial for growth. <laughs> We've had mass immigration for 20 years. We've had absolute sluggish growth for yeah. the entire time. It, 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 clear, that may, may be a correlation or a causation, but it ain't produced uh, economic growth. No, it is actually just a lie. It is a lie yeah. that there, there is this idea that all of the people who come here are highly skilled and highly motivated. And highly not paid. Because they go to countries that can actually pay them properly. They go to the United States. The best yeah. people in the world from the third world and the developing world, they go to the United States. They don't bother with us, actually. Um, and as you point out, a lot of this is about suppressing wages. That's what, you know, it works really well for companies. Oh, businesses yeah, love it. Absolutely they? love it. So, they to have free movement. so in that sense, there is some economic growth if you're a, a business, but the taxpayer ends up taking up the slack of all of that because actually it's not enough for people to work on. And it means a lot of people who are already here are left out of work. Yeah, and so we're constantly told these people are working. Yes, they're working, but they're being paid minimum wage, which, you know, and, and they're on, and they're, they're also claiming working tax credits. They've yeah. got child benefit. Um, and they are also often having housing benefits. It has been a bills now, what, 30 billion a year? On top we are subsidising mm. low wages. 